How did we come about this list? I didn't make this list. Tiki didn't make this list. Actually, Tiki I made voted. the list. I voted. He voted. And I made the list. And which, he made the list. Which made my vote mean something. That's true. <laughs> we allowed you last week to go to WFN.com slash draft, and you voted. Plus, there is a panel of distinguished dignitaries. I'm still not aware of who's on this panel who also place a vote. So it's half you, half the panel, and they have come up with this list. Yesterday, we revealed that Phil Sims was number 20. That Don Mattingly was number 19, that Tiki Barber was number 18, and that David Wright was number 17. That caused a lot of controversy. Hopefully today, everyone will be a little bit calmer. So let's start it off. Brought to you by H.L. Gross, True Lizard Garden City. Thank you, H.L. Gross. Let's start it off with number 16. Number 16, with the ninth pick in the first round of the 1986 NHL Draft, the New York Rangers select Brian Leach, Boston College. Leach will chase it down at the other end. Leach playing at a plus 19, the best in the playoffs, and his 33 points also number one. Messier moving in. Messier to the middle, looking for help. Dropped it off. Zubov. Wow, you can hear that Gordon Rod. That was Game 7. That was the first goal of Game 7 against Vancouver. Sean, you were reliving it. Oh, not a corporate crowd that night, Teak. <laughs> Brian Leach at number 16. We all feel good about that. Hall of Famer. Does that work? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm assuming there's 15 non-hockey players left. We'll see. <laughs> I can tell you that's not the case. <laughs> All right, let's hear number 15. Number 15. With the fourth pick in the first round of the 1974 NHL Draft, the New York Islanders select Clark Gillies, Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan. A minute gone by. Here comes Gillies. He shoots. He's good! Clark Gillies! What a goal! Got the jump on Brad Park down the left wing. It's all over. The New York Islanders in overtime defeated the Boston Bruins. A happy group. What a goal by Clark Gillies. Got to respect that. The great Clark Gillies, what another Hall of that? Famer. What year was that? That was the, the winner in seven. It wasn't the year they won the cup. I think that was in 78 hmm. or 79 where he scored the game winner against the Flyers. Clark Gillies was a great player. He was the captain of the Islanders and then gave it up mm. and didn't feel like he could be the captain. But he was a tough guy. He was a power forward back in the day. And then obviously he was a very big part of that dynastic Islander team that won four consecutive Stanley Cups. You can't argue that. I was, just, I was just asking for the play-by-play. Because <laughs> the play-by-play I, sounded like it was from the 50s. I know, didn't it? <laughs> I, I don't know what's coming in the next two. And clearly Clark Gillies is a big part of a dynasty team. And I just think we have to take care of the Islander fan. It's a dynasty, dude. Brian Leach had double the amount of points in the NHL. Won a con Smythe, the MVP of the playoffs. Clark Gillies had four shots to do that. Did not. He had to secede... Uh, Mark Messier is the freaking captain of the Rangers. Yeah. Brian Leach is definitely a better draft right, pick right, than Clark ta- Gillies. Let's take a deep breath here. Okay, first of all, Clark Gillies was before both of our time. I understand and that. And what's beautiful about this list is it respects history. It doesn't just respect the last, you know, 30 years. It's 50 years. the last 50 years. I think what puts Gillies above him, because you're right, I, I could sit there on hockey reference, I could look at the numbers mm-hmm. and say, what are we doing here? Four Stanley Cups yeah. and an enforcer on a Stanley Cup right, team. without the eye test. All you can do is look at the stats. Yeah. Like, you have to at least, I get it, this kind of, this little Ranger Honor thing, but you got to respect who he is and what team he was on. I'm being very careful not to hate because I respect the heck out of those Islander dynasties. I really do. I've had to hear about him my whole life, and I respect that. I've met Clark Gillies, was a great man. I'm sorry if we are doing the statistical rabbit hole. Brian Leach should not be punished for not being on a dynasty the way Clark Gillies is. He still won a more iconic cup, I would argue, and was the MVP of the team during it. And again, all the actual stats from a defensive position tell you he's the better player. Sean's turning red again. I know. Because it's just like I am now convinced that we we have put together this list with whatever crack committee you found crack to <laughs> needle me for days on end. <laughs> it's not to needle you. It has nothing to do with you. It's a genuine list. You could just accept it and start getting upset about it. If Brian Leach's prime was played on the Islanders on those dynasty teams, who's the higher? Who's the higher? Brian Leach. Leach. But okay. he wasn't. But he wasn't. 
I mean, so that's I'm, it. So now just championships no, are the only one that matters. I, no, no. I don't think it – well, first of all, ironic coming from a Yankee fan. All of a sudden now, championships don't matter. Well, That's we already, amazing. You know, we already saw – we, you know, David Wright got World Series homers. That's what put him over Don right, Mattingly yesterday. We've got two more. All right, Calm down. I don't know what's coming up next. Let's hear about number 14. Number 14. With the first pick in the first round of the 1980 MLB draft, the New York Mets select Daryl Strawberry, Crenshaw High School, Los Angeles, California. What a great call by Bob Murphy. Oh, my God. Yeah. I'm forgetting about Straw for a second. I'm thinking about the Murph. <laughs> Hearing that iconic voice. Look, Daryl Strawberry was an iconic figure in this town oh, for yeah. Met fans in the 80s. He had the must-see at bat. And there's very few guys you can say that about. There's a lot of great players. But even sometimes great players don't have the must-see at bat that Daryl had. Well, well, he was amazing because even his misses looked amazing. Oh, yes. Like, that... his swing was just so beautiful. And I, even as a kid, because it's funny with Daryl, he left as I'm, like, not even knowing baseball, mm-hmm. but sort of figuring it out. Like, I remember hearing the news about him going to L.A. But, so, I certainly remember in L.A. I remember him in San Francisco briefly. Obviously, his time with the Yankees. I would always sit there imitating his batting stance. Mm-hmm. I'll do it right now. Here we go, the wave into the bat, the elbow out. Uh-huh. You got to admit, there's a pretty good Daryl imitation I got going on right now. I'm not going to do the swing because right. that would not do him justice. You're not standing upright enough. Yeah, he no, was, he was really upright. You're right. right. <laughs> He's also like a lot taller than me. Exactly. All right, here it is, number thirteen. Who finished ahead of those three guys? Number thirteen, with the fifth pick in the first round of the 1982 MLB draft, the New York Mets select Dwight Gooden, Hillsborough High School, Tampa, Florida. Dwight Gooden has struck out 16 to tie his career high. He has won his 13th game in a row. It is his 13th complete game and sixth shutout of the year. His record is now 19 and three. You know what? And look, this isn't about you versus me, him versus you. As a Met fan, that feels right. Right. That Doc Gooden being there. Right. Well, them together. Them being together and Doc being slightly ahead. Yeah, slightly ahead. Slightly ahead. Doc got his number retired. And so, Daryl's about to. He's June, got two months to wait. June 1st, right? That's right. June 1st. <laughs> He's got to wait a little bit. Anyhow, Doc Gooden has a message for all of us. Hey, WFAN listeners and Evan and Tiki, this is Doc Gooden, and I just wanted to thank you all for voting for me as number 13 on the top 20 draft picks in New York over the last 50 years. Well, thank you, uh, Doc. Ah, You're nice. welcome. That's great to hear. I'm glad Doc appreciates that. Doc Gooden, you know, it's funny. I'm thinking about Doc and Daryl because sometimes it's easier when you've got guys in the same sport. It's what led to the whole debate yesterday about Don Mattingly and David Wright. I think like the slight tiebreaker that I give Doc is those extra three years Hmm. and the fact that Daryl, I don't want to say he just decided to leave because the Mets didn't have an interest in bringing him back. That's a whole big debate about how that kind of broke apart. But those extra three years, at least for me as a younger Met fan, make a big difference because yeah. I remember Doc Gooden for those three years. Instead, Daryl obviously went to L.A. I'd be, I'll be interested when Daryl has his moment in June 1st if he'll say similar things. That he wanted to come back? about. I'm serious, about <laughs> Doc, because we know what was going on yeah. right, with the ownership, and Doc pulled no punches when he talked about the Will Ponds and well, how he wanted to make it right with the fans. Yeah, I'm curious if Daryl Strawberry, after his time with the Mets, because remember, he left, mm-hmm. and it's all convoluted on what happened. I've heard Daryl say, I've heard Daryl Strawberry say, Frank Cashin and the Mets didn't want me back. Okay, that's his perspective of right. things. Which is very similar to what Doc was saying, that they did not want him anymore. It's similar and different. Like, similar in that they didn't want him back, but different in that Daryl was still in his prime. Yeah. Like, the Mets made a right. business decision of, we're going to let him go. And the guy they ended up signing to replace him was Vince Coleman. What a brilliant decision that was. I don't know during all those tours after, like his return mm-hmm. as a Dodger wearing number 44, that whole thing is weird, to the brief stint he had with the Giants, to him having his own off-the-field issues, to returning with the Yankees. I don't know if Daryl ever wanted to come back. Hmm. That may be the I don't know the answer. 
That may be one of the big differences. I don't know if Daryl tried to come back. Clearly, Doc Gooden made it clear he did want to come back. We'll have to talk to Daryl in June then, or probably before June. Yes. Because he's going June 1st. But he's going June 1st. We'll get him on and we'll ask him. Because Doc made it clear he wanted to be back. Nope. 